Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Where would we be without good music? <laughs> Here. <laughs> Do you know, I never slept a wink last night. I, I kept getting this hideous reoccurrent nightmare that I was an old sports car and the wife's mother had a foot on my throttle. <laughs> I lay there in my trundle bed in a bemused stupor and I gazed around at the familiar things, the rotting floorboards, <laughs> the peeling wallpaper, the fly-spattered naked 40-watt bulb, <laughs> the mouse droppings on the dresser, <laughs> the sack thrust at the broken window and I thought, by God, you're doing well for yourself then. <laughs> the wife was sleeping like a log. She had red in the fireplace. <laughs> As usual, she was snoring with all the rhythmic grace of a gastric bullock. <laughs> I bent across and kissed a gentleman on the black eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> she stirred and yawned, and with her having no teeth, and it was rather like <laughs> leaning over the rim of a damp bucket. <laughs> I'm not saying the wife's ugly. But last Christmas she stood on the mistletoe waiting for someone to kiss her and she was still there at Lent. <laughs> In fact, she went to see that film The Elephant Man and the audience thought she was making a personal appearance. <laughs> From the other bedroom came the sound of the, the mother-in-law playing a record of Hitler's speeches. <laughs> She'd obviously had a drink. She was firing a loon into the cat cinders. <laughs> but that reminded me, I thought, how music has affected my life ever since I was a kid. At the age of five, my dad gave me a packet of sandwiches and a bugle. And he opened the front door, he said, blow. Because <laughs> dad was great. I mean, my father used to actually collect old musical instruments, but he was very absent-minded because people used to come to the house to ask him where he'd put the loot. 